In the late 1970s, the Soviet Union developed a beast fighter jet, once considered a formidable rival to the F-16 Fighting Falcon, the best fighter jet in the skies at the time. That was the MiG-29 Fulcrum, a rare military technological legacy left behind by the old Soviet regime for the world of aerial combat. So how could this Soviet fighter jet defeat the F-16? And what does the future hold for this aircraft? Let's find out. By the late 1960s, the Soviet Union had established itself as the greatest rival of the West on all fronts. In terms of the military, with the introduction of the MiG-25, which boasted modern technologies and impressive combat capabilities, the Soviet Union threatened the unceasing creativity of the West. Although the MiG-25 remained a formidable threat not long after, the United States proved that they could not be left behind. They set to work developing two new fighter jets, the F-15, a trump card for achieving air superiority with the ambition of replacing the legendary F-4 Phantom, and the F-16, a versatile fighter ready to counter close-range threats, replacing the F-5. And of course, this would become the direct competitor to the MiG-29. As a result, the MiG-29 was designed to counter the new generation of American fighter jets including the F-15 and F-16. Designed as an air defense fighter, this multi-role aircraft also possessed ground attack capabilities. The task of producing direct engagement or tactical fighter aircraft for the Soviet Air Force's frontline aviation regiments was assigned to the Mikoyan Gurevich Design Bureau. Using all available technical data on the most advanced Western aircraft, MiG designers began working on the MiG-E-29 in the early 1970s, and the first prototype made its maiden flight on October 6, 1977. U.S. reconnaissance satellites detected the new fighter on November 19, 77, and NATO gave it the codename Fulcrum. Production began in 1982, and deliveries to frontline Air Force units started in 1983. For comparison, the first F-15. A aircraft of the U.S. Air Force arrived seven years earlier in 1976, and their F-16A models entered service four years earlier in 1979. But how will the MiG-29 perform against its rivals? Since its inception, the MiG-29 and F-16 have been seen as direct rivals, representing the two differing design philosophies of the Soviet Union and the United States in modern warfare. Both are medium to short-range fighter aircraft optimized for close-range dogfighting with high speed, superior maneuverability, and lightweight yet effective weaponry. German pilots, after having the opportunity to fly both the MiG-29 and F-16 during training missions following the dissolution of the Soviet Union, pointed out clear differences. The MiG-29 provides a raw flying experience thanks to its adjustable flight control systems and strong feedback through the joystick. However, the high sensitivity of the Soviet fighter is a double-edged sword. It can pose a dangerous challenge for inexperienced pilots, but in the hands of skilled aviators, it offers a significant tactical advantage. In terms of armament, the MiG-29 is mounted on six external pylons and includes the following. Medium-range air-to-air missiles R-27-1 with a maximum of two. Short-range air-to-air missiles R-73E with a maximum of four. S-8 rockets with a maximum of four rocket pods or S-24B missiles with a maximum of four, and air-to-ground bombs with a total weight of up to 2,000 kilograms. Initially, the MiG-29 could carry conventional bombs and unguided rocket pods, but was not capable of carrying precision-guided munitions. Upgraded versions, however, are capable of carrying laser and electro-optical guided bombs, as well as air-to-ground missiles, enhancing the aircraft's versatility and combat effectiveness. Meanwhile, the armament of F-16 includes one M61A 120mm cannon, 500 rounds, with a maximum of six AIM-9 Sidewinder or AIM-120 AM RAM air-to-air -air missiles. It can carry most types of air-to-ground weapons in the U.S. Air Force's arsenal, both nuclear and conventional, including the JSM-ER as well as advanced ECM systems and targeting devices. This combination provides a wide range of capabilities, enhancing the aircraft's flexibility in both air superiority and strike missions. Notably, the MiG-29 allows for the complete deactivation of the automatic flight control system, granting the pilot full control like World War II era aircraft. This is a risky option, 
but provides maximum flexibility in emergencies or when optimizing combat performance. In terms of instantaneous roll rate, the MiG can achieve between 24 to 26 degrees per second, even reaching up to 28 degrees under light load conditions. Meanwhile, the F-16A achieves similar performance at 26 degrees with its standard 1980s configuration. However, in sustained turn rate, the F-16A has a slight edge, achieving 19 degrees per second at 10,000 feet, compared to the MiG's 16.6 degrees per second at lower altitudes. This indicates that, in extended battles, the F-16 has the capability to maintain better performance, especially in situations requiring endurance. However, the MiG-29 holds a significant advantage with its Shell 3 UM helmet-mounted display system, introduced in 1984, which allows the pilot to identify targets over a wider range and deploy R-73 missiles, which were superior to the F-16's contemporaneous Sidewinder missiles. In the early years of operation, the MiG-29 and F-16 were evenly matched opponents in close-range dogfighting. The differences in performance and design reflect each country's distinct tactical approach. The MiG-29 maximizes maneuverability and responsiveness, while the F-16 emphasizes stability, long-term performance, and versatility. The superiority of each aircraft, therefore, heavily depends on the skills and experience of the pilot in each combat situation. However, the emergence of the Su-27 flanker of Sukhoi over time inherited and surpassed many of the technologies that once allowed the MiG-29 to dominate close-range dogfights. Despite being larger, the flanker possesses astonishing maneuverability, surpassing the typical limits of aircraft in its class. In a prolonged engagement, the MiG-29 could leverage its superior sustained turn rate and low aerodynamic drag to gain an advantage. But a seasoned pilot in a Su-27 could quickly reverse the situation with high-angle attack maneuvers, creating a pivotal moment in the battle. The integration of helmet-mounted target display systems, once an exclusive advantage of the MiG-29, has enhanced the flanker's close combat capabilities. Moreover, the flanker excels in aspects such as range, advanced radar, larger weapon payload, and most notably, beyond visual range BVR combat. This gives the Su-27 the ability to eliminate the MiG-29 from a distance before the adversary can close in to exploit its maneuverability advantage. After the Soviet Union collapsed, Russia's economy fell into a severe crisis, forcing the military to make difficult strategic choices. In the context of close-range dogfights becoming increasingly rare and modern radar becoming a decisive factor, the Su-27 flanker was prioritized for development due to its all-around combat capabilities and superior performance in long-range missions. If only one fighter aircraft were to be chosen to lead the formation, the Sukhoi design was clearly the optimal choice. The MiG-29 was not entirely abandoned, but its position gradually diminished as its initial advantages were overshadowed by the rapid development of rivals like the F-16 Viper and F-15 Eagle. Meanwhile, the performance gap between the MiG S-29 and Su-27 continued to grow, forcing the fulcrum to shift toward ground attack missions and upgrades to be compatible with the R-77 Beyond Visual Range BVR, air -to -air missile. Had the MiG-29 upgrade program been properly invested in, the fulcrum could have followed the path of the F-16 with modernized variants featuring advanced radar, more powerful engines, and superior avionics. In that case, this aircraft could have become a formidable threat in both close combat and BVR engagements, leveraging its inherent speed and agile maneuverability. However, the reality shows that the MiG-29's upgrade programs still can't match the remarkable development of the F-16. With over 2,000 F-16s still active globally, the MiG has become but a shadow of the promising potential it once offered. The Su-27 flanker, with its significant advancements, has become a new symbol, solidifying Sukhoi's position in the military aviation industry. However, the MiG-29 remains a formidable threat to Western pilots. The radar systems used on earlier Soviet fighters couldn't distinguish aircraft flying beneath them from ground clutter, and low-flying aircraft could evade detection. With the Fazatron, NIR N019 Doppler radar that NATO calls Slotback, capable of detecting targets more than 60 miles away, infrared tracking sensors, and a laser rangefinder equipped on the MiG-29, pilots can track and engage aircraft flying below. 
Additionally, the Shell 3 UM-1 helmet-mounted sight turned the MiG-29 into a very dangerous threat once the opponent entered visual range. Pilots no longer needed to turn the aircraft toward the target and wait for the missile seeker to lock on before firing. Now, pilots only need to turn their heads toward the target and the helmet-mounted sight will direct the missile seeker toward the target. This off-bore sight capability gives MiG-29 pilots a significant advantage in close-range combat. After many years of maintaining its Soviet-era design, the MiG-29 finally underwent a major modernization program in the mid-2000s. This program marked a significant turning point, allowing this fighter jet to step out of the shadow of the old era, bringing a range of notable improvements such as a modern glass cockpit, an upgraded HOTAS, hands on throttle and stick, control system, and an enhanced helmet-mounted display system. These improvements led to the development of new variants, including the MiG-29M, MiG-29M2, and the naval version MiG-29K. While the scale of this program could not compare with the Sukhoi series projects, it still proved that the aircraft's airframe remained a solid foundation for further development. Building on this success, a second upgrade program was initiated, resulting in the introduction of the MiG-35 Fulcrum F in 2017. This variant was marketed as part of the 4++ generation, with numerous modern upgrades. The MiG-35 became Mikoyan's final effort to sustain the original concept of the Fulcrum series. However, despite some foreign interest, orders for this new aircraft remained limited, with only a few dozen units produced for the Russian Aerospace Forces. Notably, Russian media reported that the MiG-35 was tested in the Ukraine conflict, showcasing the potential real-world applications of this aircraft series. However, since the early 2000s, Russia shifted its focus to Sukhoi aircraft, particularly the Su-30 and Su-35S. This shift caused the MiG fighter to gradually lose their prominence, relegated to supporting roles in the combat lineup. Although the MiG-29 underwent significant upgrades, these improvements couldn't keep pace with the rapid advancements of Sukhoi designs. The future of the MiG-29 and MiG-35 looks increasingly uncertain as they face fierce competition both domestically and internationally. The story of the MiG-29 is one of highs and lows. In the short term, it was a formidable opponent to the F-16 Viper, showcasing remarkable prowess in close combat. However, over time, it faded into the background as the advanced designs of Sukhoi took center stage. The primary reason for this lies in Russia's severe economic difficulties in the 1992s challenges that the United States didn't face at the time, which significantly hindered the sustainable development of the MiG-29, preventing it from maintaining its competitive edge. In your opinion, could the MiG-29 still have had a place in the modern combat lineup if it had received further development? Leave your thoughts below. Thank you for watching, and may all your journeys be safe and smooth.